Hi, I'm Luke, and I've battled with mental health problems for most of my life, um, and it was a pretty shit fight until nine months ago. I struggled with stuff like this, and feelings like this, and I genuinely hated myself for how impossible it felt for me to solve any of my problems or understand why they were happening. I moved country, I changed environment, I had a supportive girlfriend, I got my blood levels tested, I meditated, I tried to be healthy, I took all kinds of supplements, I changed my diet, um, and nothing really made a dent. I mean, even like this meme, I went to therapy, um, to a bunch of different therapists for a not insignificant amount of sessions, and none of them really made a dent on any of my problems. Everything in my life felt a bit like a tangled ball of yarn where I couldn't find the end of it, so I couldn't unravel it and fix everything. I was the only common denominator. Figuring out what was a consequence or an independent problem felt like an impossibility, and it was only actually getting diagnosed with ADHD and treated for it that made any difference at all. What is ADHD? I think there are a lot of misconceptions about what ADHD is that I shared before this year as well. And the clips that I'm about to put on screen are from a video I'll link in the description, which is probably the single most valuable resource I found online in a video format that um, explained ADHD and how to treat it. So I want you to understand that you have a brain, the back part of it is where you learn, the front part is where you do. Knowledge, performance, knowing, doing, and ADHD splits them apart. I don't care what you know, you won't use it. You can be the brightest kid in the world, not gonna matter. So you got a real problem on your hands because you can know stuff and you won't do stuff. Something that was pivotal for fixing my mental health was understanding my ADHD diagnosis and actually mental illness diagnoses in general on a spectrum rather than as some arbitrary black and white issue where maybe mentally we picture intuitively as humans that there's some switch in your brain which is either turned on or off or some part of your DNA that it determines if you have a problem or not but the reality is it's not. So for example here's the ADHD spectrum and someone further to the right on the spectrum would be more ADHD and exhibit worse attention regulation, intention regulation, impulse control, worse executive function, and generally that person would be more distractible. And then someone further to the left of the spectrum would be more focused, more conscientious, and would exhibit better executive and intention control. Now people get diagnosed just because they're closer in proximity to the far side of the spectrum than someone else. So for example, there's no like imaginary line which determines if you have ADHD or not, right? And so someone on one side of the line that's right beside the person on the other side of the line who doesn't get diagnosed is not very different at all, right? So there's no like invisible switch or determining factor as to if you're ADHD enough or you have a problem enough that validates it. I found that sharing my experience actually leads to a lot of people showing a lot of resistance to seeking treatment for ADHD and almost like delegitimizing the whole experience, especially when they can relate a lot with the things that I'm experiencing and they don't take a label themselves. The way I see it is everyone has the neural structures which uh, determine your executive control and govern that part of your body. And if you have low blood sugar, if you've been drinking, if you're tired, you'll have worse executive control. And so it's not actually that different from the experience of having ADHD yourself, right? But the difference is someone with ADHD is more persistently on one side of the spectrum than the other side, and that causes enough problems for either them or the people in their life to go seek help and fix it. Maybe it's worth mentioning that ADHD has a quite strong genetic component that maybe people aren't aware of, and people tend to give a lot more credit to genetic predispositions than they do to maybe something that was uh, as a result of your environment or something that happened because of your childhood trauma or something. So I've been sharing my experience with some people close to me in my life, and it's been really interesting their experience um, getting diagnosed or treated or the resistance that I recognize from, from them and also that I recognize from within myself throughout the process where because you've lived with something your whole life you kind of establish that as the baseline and you assume that everyone else is going through the same amount of suffering and for you to get help is almost like giving up in some way or admitting you're weak when in reality it takes courage to seek treatment after accepting a problem you have but it's I think kind of like the curse and the blessing of being human where you can become very accustomed to your surroundings so for example how many people do you know who have really bad acid reflux or they get headaches or they just can't sleep and they kind of just become accustomed to this and they think this is normal and eventually they just don't look for solutions to their problems, maybe because they get distracted or because they don't have enough time to fix them. But when you think about it, if you have this pain throughout most of your life, that's generally your body or your brain's way of telling you that something needs to change. So yeah, getting diagnosed at an older age is definitely, I think, maybe more difficult, but even more important because ADHD and executive function and lack thereof can actually affect so many different parts of your life. So how does taking medication help? What does this mean for treatment? Teaching skills is inadequate. It won't work. You can sit down with somebody with ADHD and tell them what they need to do. <laughs> Good luck. 
right? It's not even going to leave your office. You act like they're stupid. They're not. They know what to do. They know what you're telling them to do, right? They're not going to do it. When they get out there, that information has no controlling value over their life, and it ticks you off. You start to interpret it as a motivational problem. But the only way to deal with executive deficits is to re-engineer the environment around them to help them show what they know. And all treatments must be out there in their life where you have to build that scaffolding. All of this in ADHD is due to neurogenetic deficits, and that means that medication is absolutely justifiable. After all, if you have a neurogenetic disorder, then neurogenetic therapies have a role to play in your disorder. And they do. 80% of people with ADHD will be on medication at some point in their life. And good thing. It's the most effective thing we have. There are other things we can do, but that's the most effective. So, for example, imagine someone getting diagnosed with poor eyesight. Bad eyesight can actually affect so many different parts of their life to the point where maybe they don't even have a driver's license and they're blaming themselves on that because they think they're not, they don't have strong enough eyes, right? And maybe they just have to eat more carrots, right? But the reality is when they get glasses and then suddenly this medication of sorts actually facilitates them to live a life that they want to have and they can suddenly pass their driver's test. It's not the glasses that actually pass the driver's test for them, but it's glasses that enabled them to pass the driver's test. And the same uh, applies to medication and ADHD where absolutely there's ripple effects to every part of your life. So for me, for example, even just starting a workout routine was so impossible for me and gaining weight and being proud of my body. There was all sorts of body dysmorphia. And then after getting diagnosed and treated for my ADHD, I've been going to the gym more consistently and I've you know, kind of had this body transformation that wasn't done by my medication. It was done by me using the medication and creating structures around me so that I could reach the goals. This was a quick side note, which is I think I've noticed people are quite resistant to taking medication because especially if you have ADHD, you're so used to getting addicted to things and having an addictive personality. And the reality is when you actually take ADHD medication, it helps you be more conscientious of your choices, which is the low conscientiousness and poor impulse control is why you get addicted to things. And so it actually reduces how much you're addicted to. And to be honest, most people who have ADHD are probably self-medicating in some way, whether that's nicotine or caffeine or sugar as a stimulant. So why is there so much of a stigma around ADHD and treatment? Generally, I found it's just because people don't really understand. So for example, even the H in ADHD stands for hyperactivity, which is a symptom that's not actually that prevalent in most adults with ADHD. And so all the other things with the poor impulse control that when you're young might manifest as being like, super hyperactive that turns to an inattentive ADHD, which is what they call it when you're older, can actually result in a lot of negative self-talk and even guilt and shame for feeling like you're a child because you know the part of your brain that governs executive function does develop as you age. But if you have ADHD, it hasn't developed to the same degree as other people. So there's no shame in that. It just means you have to search treatment for it. Something that was my mantra over this past year is it's not your fault, but it is your responsibility or it is your problem. And I think this kind of helped me have a perspective as to how to fix my ADHD and also the nature of accepting it in the same way that I think a lot of people struggle to accept their trauma or their even their privilege as their two sides of the same coin. But it's when you can accept that something's not your fault, but it becomes your responsibility that suddenly you can start taking action to fix it. Mainly, I found that people just don't like when you use a diagnosis as a scapegoat or a reason for bad behavior. And that's completely understandable because a diagnosis doesn't actually excuse you from the consequences of your actions, but rather it actually gives you a reason for why your actions might be a certain way. And it gives you a responsibility to suddenly use this information to create a strategy about how to fix your problems. So what is my plan with this channel? Four years ago, I was experiencing some pretty bad anxiety and having panic attacks and anxiety attacks. And so I was trying to fix it in different ways. And there were some techniques like find five things you can see and four things you can smell and three things you can hear and two things you can touch. And then that will help you not have a panic attack. And then there was also like journaling or essentially dumping all of your thoughts onto paper or a Google Doc, which I was doing, which then actually resulted in me having pages upon pages of notes or responsibilities or lists. And then I developed all of that and I've created a health wiki of sorts. So you can see it's got like different parts. It's got like a mental health tree, which has, you know, diagnoses and concepts and symptoms. And then there's a physical health tree. And so that's kind of just things I've been learning about, like optimizing my physical health. And I think by going through the experiences myself, I kind of want to share my journey and also contribute to fixing the problem of people just relating with everything and not actually feeling like there's any action they can take to work on their problems or to fix their problems. So we are going to have to help people with ADHD build the scaffolding around them and use the medication as neurogenetic therapy with them in order to compensate for these executive deficits. We're going to have to design prosthetic environments around them. You know, the beauty of ADHD 
is it's the most treatable disorder in psychiatry. There is no disorder that we treat that has as many medications and as many psychosocial treatments that are as effective as these are for as many people producing more change than any other medications and psychosocial treatments for these individuals. Do you know that 55% of people on medication are normalized? 90% of them respond? Do you know that the effects of ADHD medications are three times that of anxiety drugs and antidepressants that you all give away like candy in your practice? We have huge effective drugs on our hands here that we can use. And we also have very effective psychosocial interventions. This is the most treatable disorder that we face. The biggest problem is most people don't get treatment. 40% of children and 90% of adults with ADHD are not recognized or treated for their disorder. That's the problem. Not that we're over treating, we are under treating. And we're under treating the most treatable disorder in psychiatry. Yeah!